before we start. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Willa Cather and I am so excited about being your substitute teacher today. Throughout my career, I only taught high school English for about five years, but I'm pretty sure I can handle you all. If you have any questions, you can just see the resume I handed out. You see, a lot of the men have returned to schooling, and though about 10 years have passed since the Great War, I'm sure all of you are happy to return to some sense of normalcy and recreation here in 1928. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my writing and my art and my life, but first I have to apologize. I may be a bit out of sorts today because my father, Charles Cather, he recently passed on from heart failure. But Regardless, the time Father and I had together, such a gift. He would have loved him. Everybody did. One of my favorite memories is back when we lived in Virginia. He used to put shoes on the sheep dogs so they wouldn't cut their feet on the stony ground. <laughs> he was the dearest of men. And right now, even thinking about it kind of just makes me angry. I mean, I don't get how time can just take away something that is so dear to you and it means so much. I guess I've never really been one for change. You see, I was born December 7, 1873, in Bat Creek Valley, Virginia. My father, Charles, he was a deputy sheriff. Well, my mother, Mary, she was a homemaker. But when I was nine, we moved from the land I loved so much to Red Cloud, Nebraska. It was so different from anything I'd ever been used to. I was homesick and lonely and upset and depressed, well, as depressed as a nine-year-old can get. And I didn't really have any friends. So I figured I might as well go and try to make the best of it. So I looked around and there are a lot of differences between Virginia and Nebraska. For one, there are far more immigrants than I'd ever seen in my life. Nearly one-third of Nebraskans at the time were immigrants. So I suppose that's why nearly every protagonist in my story as an immigrant. But nevertheless, that's not what kept me satisfied. <laughs> I used to ride my horse all throughout the prairies for hours and hours on end. And within a few short months, that shiny grassland is what captivated my heart. I mean, there's an unshakable passion that came just, you know, when you just smell the soil and spend hours in the fields fishing and camping with my brothers. And <laughs> my favorite brother, Douglas, he worked on the railroad. So we could ride the train for free and <laughs> we would go to the Black Hills and camp and I'll admit, I came home with some illegal souvenirs from Walnut Canyon as well. <laughs> my mother, she never really approved of how we children spent our time. Then again, my mother and I never really agreed about much of anything. I mean, we were alike in some ways, strong-headed women who always knew what they wanted, but that's where our likeness ended. She was, oh, she was beautifully elegant. In spite of having seven children, she was always well-groomed. We wouldn't even see her in the morning until her hair was perfectly thin and she had a parasol to match her outfit. She never really liked my, how did she put it, savage taste of color, like it was supposed to insult me. I remember one time she was fussing, fussing that she couldn't fix my hair anymore, so I went to the barber and I just got it all chopped off. Oddly enough, she didn't really speak to me for a few days after that one. <laughs> yeah, we were just too different. It was also her idea to name me Willa, but I never really even felt like Willa. I feel more like Willie, but proper little girls. They were never allowed to play with little Willie Cather. Proper little girls. They were supposed to sit still, be clean, and sew. What agony. I can never do that. I'd so much rather be fishing and just building rafts and being with my brothers. Oddly enough, as a kid, I didn't really even want to be a writer. I would much rather be a doctor. Some of my favorite memories was following Doctors and Keebly and Damerol on their house visits. I think the greatest moment in my childhood was when Dr. McDamerol, he had to amputate a little boy's leg. And he let me administer the chloroform. I mean, that's, that's pretty unheard of for a little girl. It's a pretty big deal. But 
though me and the doctors, we had common interests, but it seemed like no one around me ever wanted to read what I was reading. Keats, Jacobs, Tolstoy, the Greats. My grandmother, she homeschooled me, so I think that's what spurred my early love for the passion that came behind a magnificent story. So it really sparked my interest in stories, so not until I entered the University of Nebraska did I ever really want to be a writer. See, I entered the university in the fall of 1891. Actually, for the first part of it, I dressed as my twin brother, William Cather. Was it wrong to dress like a man? I don't know, but they wouldn't have taken me seriously otherwise. I mean, if I wrote my name Willa Cather, who would care to read what a woman has written? But maybe if I wrote <coughs> William, they'd actually see what I had to say instead of just writing me off for being a girl. I remember one time, my professor, he assigned an essay on Thomas Carlyle, and I guess he liked what I wrote because I later saw it in the Nebraskan State Journal. And that, that's when I knew I wanted to be a writer. But I didn't just want to be any writer. I wanted to be a novelist. Shortly after graduation, I applied to work at the university as a teacher. And I was so heartbroken when they denied my application. But, you see, it turned out for the best. Because then I went and taught high school, high school English, for about five years. And that's where I met the love of my life, Isabel McClung. Oh, we did everything together. Danced, talked, sang, traveled, you name it. But while that friendship was gently blossoming, I got a job as an editor of McClure Magazine. I really liked that job because it gave me the fundamentals of writing that I never knew were so important. I mean, I never knew that vocabulary, timing, logistics, all that played so heavily in the process of story making. My first collection of short stories was under the name Troll Garden, and it was published by McClure Magazine itself. Yet, after five years of that editing job, I just knew I needed to move forward and pursue writing full time. My first novel, that was called Alexander's Bridge. And at the time, I was trying to copy Henry James because he was a realist, but it didn't really succeed. I suppose that happens so often with people. I mean, we don't know who we are, so we try and copy someone else. But by copy, it's just an imitation. It's not us. Readers know that. So, we try and try to whittle down to who we are as a writer, what makes us interesting. I needed to figure out who I was and write from the center going out instead of just the outside looking into someone else. Do I regret not being true to myself? Of course, but I see that need for growth. I mean, would you make fun of a child for acting like a child? Or a teenager for trying on different personas, trying to figure out who they exactly are? I finally realized 10 years ago, in 1918, what I wanted as a writer. I don't want anyone reading my works to think about style. I just want them to be so heavily caught up in the story, just that unshakable passion that came, that came when I learned about the greats with my grandmother. But see, that, that's where the trouble comes in. I mean, who am I? I mean, am I that little girl from Red Cloud, Nebraska, or am I this booming writer from New York? That's what's tough. I mean, sometimes I just want to throw everything away and live. But I am a writer. Oddly enough, my deepest affections, it's not for the people I write about, and it's not for the places I've been writing of. It's for the country and the open prairies of Nebraska. That is that's where I got inspiration. That's where they called me Willie. Where I dreamed big dreams. You know, I said this before while being interviewed, but I'll say it again. I truly believe that the most basic material that a, writing, that a writer will work with and is inspired by happens before the age of 15. Because you write about what you know. I suppose that's why my work entitled My Antonia is considered one of my most favorable about a man named Jim Burden and his recollections of his childhood friend, Antonia. 